Well, and my name is Dr. Fonsel. I'm the Senior Research uh, Coordinator of Human Rights on Crown in the South African Human Rights Commission. I am a, a human rights lawyer by, by training and I work uh, extensively around the world uh, at the Court of Austin Legal Services in Boston, Massachusetts, as well as the International Human Rights Law Group. We are coordinating the programs in West Africa, most notably Nigeria, but in Iran, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. Um, I also did work for the um, United Nations of Icons and Refugees uh, in Cambodia, Timor uh, Leste, and in Sudan. So um, I just before I joined the United Commission, I also was uh, I was a colleague of David uh, at the Center uh, for the Study of Violence and Reconciliation. So um, I can tell originally, so uh, we couldn't figure it out by now. So um, so yeah. Um, to come and talk here today about um, the rights of victims. That was a very broad thing. And when we talk about rights of victims, I have decided just to focus basically on the rights of victims of, of violent crime. That is not to say that we are not cognizant or don't pay the same kind of weight to um, victims of other types of, of non-violent crime, I think we all can agree that uh, they are real suffering when we have like collusion in terms of bad prices or with, uh, pharmaceuticals and stuff like that. Because it has a genuine and real effect on people's everyday life and how they order and plan their livelihoods. Um, we as an African Human Rights Commission are basically tasked with the promotion and protection of human rights. It is a uh, mandate that we are supposed to exercise without fear, fear of prejudice, and we don't usually make a lot of friends. Uh, we make rulings or we make renunciations that does seldom satisfy everybody else. But such is the very nature of, of, of our job, and uh, as we say, like, that's okay with us. Um, we also, uh, as you know, an independent in sort of chapter 9 institution, we are independent uh, of government. And I'm just happy today to, to be here and to come to this kind of forum to come and discuss things of, of importance, as opposed to going into a maximum fight with students of power in the media and like, and you ask uh, the city, why don't you come and discuss these things of our like to move forward and they blatantly deny calling us enablers of human rights abuses in South Africa, as opposed to protectors, and also accusing us of being the reason why criminals have saved us guys in this country. And then they don't want to come and say, like, but that's just what we're going to put forward. Then uh, it really, it really wraps around the wrong way. So uh, I'm, I'm happy in that regard that we had the opportunity to come and talk about some of, some of these issues um, here today. Now, I think we are all worried about the scripts of crime in, in South Africa. As human rights practitioners, we cannot ignore the fact that crime and its devastating effects is negatively impacting on the enjoyment of rights in the Constitution. If you look at our Constitution, I mean, all these fancy rights, and when we go around the world bragging about us having the most progressive Constitution, and all that, and all that, and we get high praise, and um, we cannot go to a constitutional court lecture at Harvard University, and uh, Professor Tribe or anyone, anybody else, does not mention the South African Constitution. Um, and, uh, but, at the end of the day, when you look at our reality, and you say, like, what has this constitution, what has this Bill of Rights come to? Like, how does, can this rights find like, application in the reality that we are currently facing? And so the scourge of crime, as I said, is definitely negatively impacting on our enjoyment of rights here in South Africa. Not only that, but it also impacts negatively on the psyche of, of our nation. I mean, like when we drafted our constitution 14 years ago, I mean, so boldly we said, like, this, we, like, never, never, never again will the people of South Africa go through these kinds of things that we were used to do in the past. I don't think that we could have guessed that 14 years later, that our daily discourse would be so overwhelmed in, by talks of crime. That crime today 
And we basically were the states are uh, if it bleeds, it bleeds, and our newspapers you know, can critique that what it's worth. But it is a reality, inescapable uh, reality from which we cannot, cannot uh, run away. But when you look at crime and the rights of victims of crime, I think that we need to look at our, our history as well. Now, we cannot deny the fact that South Africa has a very violent history. We started from the early recorded history of the settlers, um, the, the Koi Koi Rules in, in the Cape, um, going through the slave rebellion of the Cape, where thousands of, of the people were killed. You get the Mufakali, the Fukali of, of Kinshaka, you get the extension of the Cape in, in the turn of the century, 19th century, um, all violent uh, uh, episodes. Then we go ahead, we go to the frontier wars um, of the Kai River, um, the, the cattle theft episode of, of the Chosa and, and, and the results and effects of, of that. Then we get like some of the most heinous, I mean, like, atrocities in the history of the world, in the end of the war, and where our forefathers and, and brothers and sisters were able to like, turn the concentration camp into a toxin of uh, concentration camps into the world. Heinous things. Um, for which little or no apologies had been offered uh, thus far. We get the, the 1914 rebellions, we get the 1922 mine strikes, and then you get the emergence of, of the organized uh, black resistance, you get Sabo massacred, uh, and you get the formal uh, uh, announcement of an armed struggle by the African National Congress, by an African Congress against the then government of South Africa. You get the uh, South, you get the 1976 uprising, violence, when violence became like everyday occurrence in many of our townships like across the country. We get at the same time, during that time, we get the, the, um, the war in Angola, uh, the border was there, where many of our young sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, I mean, like, died uh, on both sides um, of the fence, paid the ultimate sacrifice. Um, and so the 1980s internally we have the total onslaught um, of the 80s, state of emergencies, um, incarceration of people dying in detention, all of this kind of thing. We get the 1990s when you have like the Ikata, um, so called Ikata, um, ANC work, back on black violence as, as it was referred to, third force involved, with all these kind of things. Uh, and it is just continuing, and today we are where we are um, with this scourge of crime that is um, affecting us like so heavily. So I think that we cannot deny the fact that violence has always been part of the text and subtext of South African existence. And if we say that violence has always been part of the text and the subtext, then we must also admit that victimhood has also been part of the text and subtext of South African existence. And if you know what has been written about violence and then we can be prepared what has been written about victims, then we can probably come to a fairly safe conclusion that um, victims has been an underserved constituency in South Africa. And not enough have been done about victims, not enough have been uh, written about, about victims. And so we found ourselves in this precarious position that we sometimes don't know how to give effect to the rights of victims within our particular context. Now, as the South African Bill of Rights, I mean, like clearly stated, or the right to human dignity, or we the right to physical and bodily integrity, uh, the right to be free from all forms of violence, both from private and uh, public sources. And so the constitutional protections are there. Now we all know in terms of the social context where we say like, okay government, we give you the right to exercise some form of control over us and we will abide by certain laws that is laid down by you guys and in exchange for that, we want X, Y, Z benefits uh, from the system. But we want protection from you as a government. And I think that victims in this country can fairly ask that to what extent is government um, holding their part of the bargain. 